Go. All right. Today we're working on uh, lesson CC eight EE seven, which is solving linear equations in one variable. Basically, we're simplifying algebraic expressions. Uh, we have a couple key terms. Uh, vocabulary. The first vocabulary term is is a term, and it says that's an expression that's separated by plus or minus signs. Basically, that's all they're doing. Every term is separated by either a plus or minus sign, not by multiplication or division. So we got to make sure we understand the difference between the two. The second thing we have is like terms, which I'm going to focus on first. Like terms, basically, to make it real simple, have the same variable and the same exponent. For example, if we look at the board, if I have 2a plus 4a, what we want to look at is this variable. And if we look at the variable, they both have a in common. Since they both have a in common, it tells me to add. Basically, this is 6a. An uh, easy way to look at it is saying, hey, I have two apples, somebody had four apples, how many do we have combined? Another example of like terms is 4a squared plus 8a squared. If we look at it, both the variable and the exponent are the same. And once again, when they're the same, only thing we do is add the whole numbers, which is 4 and 8, and we come up with 12a squared. Now, a lot of times, people want to add the exponents. We can't add the exponents when we're doing addition because if we add the exponent, it actually changes the value of what we're doing. All right? And the last thing we have what we call simplify. When we have more than one term or more than two terms, we have to simplify. For example, if I look at 4a squared plus 5a squared plus 10, if we look at this, this has a squared, the 5 has a squared, but the 10 doesn't have a variable. So what we want to do is we want to combine the two like terms and come up with 9a squared plus 10. Now, we can't add 9a squared plus 10 because the 10 doesn't have a variable and it doesn't have an exponent. So basically, what we're trying to do is we're trying to compare the two to see if we can add and subtract. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple problems. We have more than one like term. One of the key things that we must identify is the like terms and the sign in front of it. So, what I'm going to do is look at number, we're going to focus on number two. Number two says 2z plus 5 plus 3z. So we have 2z plus 5 plus 3z. And we must simplify this as much as possible. So if we look at it, the 2 has a z and the 3 has a z. Those are our like terms. The 5 doesn't have anything. That's our unlike term. It's not the same. So now we have to, what we're going to do is this. And I'm going to go back just a little bit. When we get ready to move like terms, we got to move the term and the sign in front of it. So if I look at 3z, we have a plus sign in front of 3z. So now, that's why I wrote the plus sign. So we come back, we add, we get 5z plus 5. Now, let's look at number 3, because number 3 has multiple terms. And we're going to focus on this one. It says 6f squared plus 3 minus 4f plus 5 plus 10f squared. And what we want to do is we want to combine like terms. So we have 6f squared plus 3 minus 4f plus 5 plus 10f squared. The first thing we want to do is combine like terms. What I'll do is I'll erase this to make it just a little bit more legible. 6f squared plus 3. We want to combine like terms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to circle every term that has f squared together. So if I circle this, we get 6f squared, and I'm going to circle the plus sign 10f squared. It's important that we keep the signs with the numbers when they move. So we'll write 6f squared plus 10f squared. Now we're looking for the next unlike term. The next unlike term is minus 4f. In this case, we only have one term with f by itself. So I'm just going to circle it and put it by itself. But I have to keep the minus with it. 
And the last two terms of our basic numbers, we get plus 3 and plus 5. Combined like terms, we get 10f squared minus 4f plus 8. Now, the last thing, which I'm going to go a little bit more into, we have to make sure we have our variables in order from greatest to least, descending order. Right here, actually this is f squared. Right here we have f to the first. And even though we don't have an f, we can say f to the zero. Anything to the zero power is always one. So we multiply eight times one, we stay here. And we'll look at one more problem, and I'll try to find a difficult one. And we have number six. Number six uh, simply states 3x to the third plus 5 minus x to the third plus 3 plus 4x. Once again, we have to identify all like terms. All like terms. So, the first thing I identify is 3x cubed and minus x cubed. 3x cubed and minus x cubed. So the next one. Now, in front of this x, we don't have a number. But automatically, when we don't have a number in front of the variable, it's always one, automatically. The next thing we have, the next term is plus 4x. And then we come at the end, we add plus 5 and plus 3. So now our final answer is 2x cubed plus 4x plus 8. If you have any questions, if you need any more detail, you, if you have anything that you may have questions on, you can always look on Khan Academy. If you could type in simplifying algebraic expression on Khan Academy, it has a section that will go right to it. If you want to go back and look at how we came back with energy, how we added to track energies, once again, go on Khan Academy. There's all kinds of technology and websites out there available for us to use. Thank you.